Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda Dillinger. <laughs> this is my pug Watson. He decided to join me on today's video and this is my stuffed dragon. <laughs> I am a neurodivergent woman. I have aphantasia, a rare memory disorder, and I've recently been diagnosed with autism and ADHD. I almost didn't make a, a video today because I'm kind of having an off day. But I, one of the purposes of my channel is to create content that people who are going through a late diagnosis can kind of relate to and understand and not feel alone because everybody who's autistic is going to have their own unique experiences. But a lot of the times, a lot of us are going through these um, same emotions or experiences. There's my kitty cat Echo. No, no, don't be naughty. <laughs> Watson is trying to train the cat not to scratch the couch. Watson, okay, good boy. Anyway, so for a neurotypical person, you know, they can have bad days too. Autistic people can have bad days. And for an autistic person, a bad day can be like so bad that it would put them into maybe a nonverbal state. They might go have a meltdown, which is a different experience for various people. I typically just kind of withdraw want to kind of go into myself. I'm a very normally extroverted person, but when I'm kind of having just an autistic, like sensory overload type of day, I actually do want to get more quiet and not talk to people, which always feels weird to me because I like talking usually. But the last couple of days I think has led up to this where I've just been going, 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 and my sensory overload just kind of cultivated today and just not feeling very good and then having a dentist appointment yesterday to get a tooth filled just really was a lot and then hey echo please don't do that be good for the camera and then last night we as a family went out to dinner well that might not seem like a lot to y'all, but to our family, that's actually quite a big deal. We rarely go out to dinner as a family. I go out more than the rest of the family because I will meet some of my friends for like a lunch or something. But the four of us as our family unit rarely goes out to dinner. One, I cook a lot. Uh, I have another whole channel devoted to cooking. I love to cook. My family just mostly likes my cooking more than restaurant foods, but also because my kids are autistic, restaurants have always been very sensory overload places that they have not enjoyed. Everything from having to choose what to eat off the menu, talking to a waiter, um, tuning out all the chaotic noises, the bright lights. A lot of restaurants have TVs flashing. There's just actually quite a lot of sensory input into a restaurant. Well, the reason why we decided to go yesterday was actually a occupational therapy assignment for my son, Ira. Um, he's working through some social anxiety things and the occupational therapist suggested that maybe we go out to a restaurant and then Ira order from the menu and actually talk to the waiter, which is a huge step. And because he usually gets select mutism and physically cannot place his order. But we worked through an entire uh, like lead up to this to get him to a place where he wanted to try this and be comfortable doing it. Hey, all done. So he was able to order and that actually went really well. But the, here's the funniest thing. So... Since my diagnosis, actually, I think this is the first time that I've been in a restaurant. Like I said, we just don't go out to eat very often. And I've always enjoyed restaurants, but I've 
always been aware of how hard they are for me. So my masked self, and of course, people who are undiagnosed autistic don't realize they're masking, but I would go into a restaurant with a friend or whatever, and I would have to very, very much tune out all of that external noise and input to be able to concentrate on what my friend is saying. And I never realized how much energy that actually took from me. I like going out to restaurants, or at least I always thought I loved going out to eat to restaurants because it seemed like something that people like to do. And I thought I enjoyed it. I like talking to my friends and I like trying new foods, but all that sensory stuff really is exhausting to me. And I just never realized how much. And see, here's the thing that I'm struggling with as now I have a diagnosis, I'm now understanding why all that sensory input bothers me. And then you're just like left feeling, well, why do those kinds of things? Like go to these restaurants if they cause that much stress and anxiety where I have to work that hard to tune out all this sensory input. And it's like, is it worth it? Is there other activities that I can do with my friends that maybe don't cause this much anxiety? I never realized how much anxiety they actually created in me. It's, I'm, I'm not sure I've even explained this very well. It's frustrating because I've always thought that I liked restaurants, but honestly, now with this diagnosis, I am questioning like everything. And I know it's a space that a lot of newly diagnosed autistic people go through. And that's why I'm making this video because I don't even know the answer right now. I'm just talking off the cuff, trying to put my emotions and feelings into some kind of sensical language here. How can something that I identified as something that I really enjoy doing after a diagnosis now I'm left feeling, holy cow, I was just pretending that I liked that. And I do like my friends. I'm extroverted. I get energy talking to people. At least I hope and I think. Now I'm even questioning that. Like how much of my life as a 42-year-old undiagnosed woman was masking? And it's like I am seriously learning who I am, what I like, what I need, and something as simple as going to a restaurant, something that I would have not even thought twice about before my diagnosis, has sent me into this like spiral of questioning all the things. So please comment down below if you relate to this. If you are somebody who is supporting somebody who else, supporting a family member that is going through a diagnosis, you know, please understand that this is a very confusing time and just give patience because we don't know the answers either. We're all just trying to figure this out. <sighs> I hope this re resonates, relates to you. It is very vulnerable to be posting this information that I myself am not even sure that I understand. I, I like, this is all new. This is just me experiencing something that is quite significant and trying to figure it all out. Hey Echo, please don't interrupt my video. Anyway, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, which is something that autistic people do. So I will wrap it up and say thank you so much for supporting this channel. And because I really, really want to make a difference. <sighs> and with that, guys, I'll see you next time.